DMV Handbook for your CDL, Section 2.9 through 2.14. We begin by talking about distracted driving. A driver distraction is anything that takes your attention away from driving. Whenever you are driving a vehicle and your full attention is not on the driving task, you are putting yourself, your passengers, and other vehicles as well as pedestrians in danger. Distracted driving can cause accidents, resulting in injury, death, or property damage. Activities inside your vehicle that can distract your attention include talking to passengers, adjusting the radio, CD player or climate controls, eating, drinking, or smoking reading maps or other literature, picking up something that fell on the floor, talking on a cell phone or CB radio, reading or sending text messages, using any type of telematic or electronic device, such as your navigation system, daydreaming or being occupied with other mental dis distractions, and many other things as well. Possible distractions that occur outside a moving vehicle, traffic, vehicles, or pedestrians, events such as police pulling someone over, an accident scene, or the sunlight, objects in the roadway, road construction, reading billboards or other road advertisements, and many other things as well. The Distracted Driving Crash Problem A large truck crash causation study reports that 8% of large truck accidents occur when commercial vehicle drivers were externally distracted and 2% of large truck accidents occurred when the driver was internally distracted. Approximately 5,500 people are killed each year on the U.S. roadways and an estimated almost half a million are injured in motor vehicle accidents involving distracted driving. National Highway Traffic Society Administration Traffic Safety Facts has done this study. Research indicates that the burden of talking on a cell phone, even if it's a hands-free, saps the brain of 39% of the energy it would ordinarily devote to safe driving. Drivers who use a hands-held device are more likely to get into an accident serious enough to cause injury. What are the effects of distracted driving? Well, the effects of distracted driving include slowed perception which may cause you to be delayed in perceiving or completely fail to perceive an important traffic event. Delayed decision-making and improper action, which can cause you to become delayed in taking the proper action or make incorrect inputs in, to the steering, accelerator, or brakes. Types of Distractions There are many causes of distractions, all with the potential of increased risk. A physical distraction, a mental distraction, or both physical and mental distractions. Now, a physical distraction, one that causes you to take your hands off the wheel or eyes off the road, such as reaching for an object. And the mental distraction, activities that take your mind away from the road, such as engaging in conversation with a passenger or thinking about something that happened during the day. Both physical and mental distractions, even greater chances of an accident, such as talking on a cell phone and sending or reading text messages. Let's talk about cell phones. CFR Title 49, Part 30, 383, 384, 390, 391, and 392 of the Hazardous Materials Regulations restricts the use of handheld mobile telephones by drivers in a commercial vehicle and implements new driver disqualification sanctions for drivers of commercial vehicles who fail to comply with the federal restriction or who have multiple convictions for violating a state or state law or ordinance on motor vehicle traffic control that restricts the use of handheld mobile telephones. Additionally, motor carriers are prohibited from re requiring or allowing drivers of a commercial vehicle to use the handheld device. The use of handheld mobile telephone means using at least one hand to hold a mobile telephone to conduct a voice communication, or dialing a mobile telephone by pressing more than a single button or moving from a seated driving position while restrained by a seat belt to reach for a mobile telephone. If you choose to use a mobile phone while operating a commercial vehicle, you may only use a hands-free mobile phone that is located close to you and that can be operated in compliance with the rule to conduct a voice communication. Your CDL will be disqualified for two or more convictions of any state law on the mobile handheld device law, 
Disqualification is 60 days for the second offense within a three year and 120 days for three or more offenses within three years. In addition, the first and each subsequent violation of such a prohibition are subject to civil penalties imposed on such drivers in an amount up to $2,750. Motor carriers must not allow nor require drivers to use a handheld mobile telephone while driving. Employers may also be subject to civil penalties in the amount of $11,000. There is an emergency exception that allows you to use your handheld mobile telephone in necessary to communicate with law enforcement officials or other emergency services. Research shows the odds of being involved in a safety critical event is six times greater for commercial vehicle drivers who engage in dialing a mobile telephone while driving for those who are not. Dialing drivers took their eyes off the forward roadway for an average of 3.8 seconds at 55 miles per hour, which is 80 feet. This equates to a driver traveling 306 feet, the approximate length of a football field, without looking at the roadway. Your primary responsibility is to operate a motor vehicle safely, and to do this you must focus your full attention on the driving task. Note that hands-free devices are no less likely than handheld cell phones to cause you to become distracted. Attention is diverted from the driving task while using either device. In California, you are not allowed to use an electronic device while driving unless you are using a hands-free device. Even these devices are unsafe to use when you are driving down the road. If you must use your electronic communication device while driving, follow these tips. Try to keep it brief and never use the electronic device for social visiting. Hang up your cell phone in difficult traffic situations. Do not use the vehicle equipment or any electronic communication device when approaching locations with heavy traffic, road constructions, heavy pedestrian traffic, or severe weather conditions. Do not attempt to type or read messages while driving. Texting. Let's talk about texting. The FMCSR prohibits texting from commercial vehicle drivers while operating in interstate commerce and implements new driver disqualification sanctions for drivers of commercial vehicles who fail to comply with this federal prohibition or who have multiple convictions for violating state or local laws. Additionally, motor carriers are prohibited from requiring or allowing their drivers to engage in texting while driving. Texting means manually entering text into or reading text from an electrical device. This includes, but it is not limited to, short message services, emailing, assistance messaging, a command or request to access a worldwide web page, or engaging in any other form of electronic text retrieval or entry for present or future communications. Electronic devices include, but is not limited to, a cell phone, personal digital assistance, a pager, a computer, or any other device used to enter, write, send, receive, or read text. Your CDL will be disqualified, disqualified for two or more convictions in any state law on texting while operating the commercial vehicle. Disqualification is 60 days for the second offense within the three years and 120 days for three or more offenses within three years. In addition, the first and each subsequent violation of such a prohibition are subject to civil penalties imposed on such drivers in the amount of $2,750. No motor carrier shall allow or require the driver to engage in text while driving. There is an emergency exception that allows you to text if necessary to communicate with law enforcement officials or other emergency services. Evidence suggests text messaging is even higher of a risk than talking on a cell phone because it requires you to look at small screen and manipulate the keypad with one hand. Texting is the most alarming distraction because it involves both physical and mental distraction simultaneously. Research shows that the odds of being involved in safety critical event is 23.2 times greater for commercial vehicle drivers who engage in texting while driving than those who do not. Sending a receiving text takes your eyes from the road for an average of 4.6 seconds at 55 miles per hour. You would travel 371 feet or the length of an entire football field without looking at the roadway. Do not drive distracted. 
Your goal should be to eliminate all in-vehicle distractions before the driving begins. Accomplishing this goal can be done by assessing all potential in-vehicle distractions before you drive, developing a preventative plan to reduce or eliminate possible distractions, expecting distractions to occur, discussing possible scenarios before getting behind the wheel. Based on the assessment of potential, potential distractions, you can formulate a preventive plan to reduce or eliminate possible distractions. If drivers react a half a second slower because of distractions, accidents then double. Some tips to follow so you will not become distracted. Turn off all communication devices. If you must use a mobile phone, make sure it's within close proximity that it is operable while you are restrained. Use an earpiece or the speakerphone function. Use voice-activated dialing. And use the hands-free feature. Drivers are not in compliance if they unsafely reach for a mobile phone, even if they intend to use the hands-free function. Do not type or read text messages on a mobile device while driving. Familiarize yourself with your vehicle's features and equipment before you get behind the wheel. Adjust all vehicle controls and mirrors to your preferences prior to driving. Pre-program radio stations and preload your favorite CDs. Clear the vehicle of any unnecessary objects and secure cargo. Review maps, program the GPS, and plan your route before you begin driving. Do not attempt to read or write while you drive. Avoid smoking, eating, and drinking while you drive. Leave early to allow yourself enough time to stop and eat. Do not engage in complex or emotional intense conversations with other occupants. Secure commitment from other occupants to behave responsibly and to support the driver in reducing distraction. Watch out for other distracted drivers. You need to be able to recognize other drivers who are engaged in any form of distracted driving. Not recognizing other distracted drivers can prevent you from perceiving or reacting correctly in time to prevent an accident. So watch for these things. Watch for vehicles that may drift over the lane or within your own lane. Watch for vehicles traveling at an incon inconsistent speed. Watch for drivers who are preoccupied with maps, food, cigarettes, cell phones, or other objects. Watch for drivers who appear to be involved in conversations with other passengers. Give a distracted driver plenty of room to maintain your safe following distance. Be very careful when passing a driver who seems to be distracted. That driver may not be aware of your presence, and they may shift into your lane. Let's talk about aggressive drivers and road rage. What is road rage or aggressive driving? Aggressing, aggressive driving and road rage is not a new problem. However, in today's world, where heavy and slow moving traffic and tight schedules are the norm, more and more drivers are taking out their anger and frustration in their vehicles. Crowded roads leave no room for error leading to suspicious and hostility among drivers and encouraging them to take personally the mistakes of other drivers. Aggressive driving is the act of operating a motor vehicle in a selfish, bold, or pushy manner without regard for the rights or safety of others. One sign of an aggressive driver is, is a driver changing lanes frequently and abruptly without notice. Road rage is operating a motor vehicle with the intent of doing harm to others or physically as assaulting a driver or their vehicle. Do not be an aggressive driver. How you feel before you even start your vehicle has a lot to do with how stress will affect your driving. Reduce your stress before and while you drive. Listen to easy listening music. Give the drive your full attention. Do not allow yourself to become distracted by talking on your cell phone, eating, etc. Be realistic about your travel time. Expect delays because of traffic, construction, or bad weather, and make allowance for this. If you are going to be later than you expected, deal with it. Take a deep breath and accept the delay. Now give other drivers the benefit of the doubt. Try to imagine why he or she is driving that way. Whatever their reason, it has nothing to do with you. Slow down and keep your following distance reasonable. Do not drive slowly in a left lane of traffic. 
Avoid gestures. Keep your hands on the wheel. Avoid making any gestures that might anger other drivers. Even seemingly harmless expressions of irritation like shaking your head. Be a cautious and courteous driver. If another driver seems eager to get in front of you, just say, Be my guest. And this response will soon become a habit, and you will not be as offended as other drivers. What you should do when confronted by an aggressive driver. First and foremost, make every attempt to get out of their way. Put aside your pride. Do not challenge them by speeding up or attempting to hold your own. In the travel lane, avoid eye contact, ignore gestures, and refuse to react to them. Report aggressive drivers to the appropriate authorities by providing a vehicle description, license number, location, and if possible, direction of travel. If you have a cell phone and can use it safely, call the police. If an aggressive driver is involved in an accident farther down the road, stop a safe distance away from the accident scene, wait for the police to arrive, and report the driving behavior that you've witnessed. Now it's time to test your knowledge. I'll ask a few questions, and you should know the answer in your mind. If you don't know the answer, you may need to re-listen to these sections. Question number one. What are some tips to follow so you will not become a distracted driver? Number two. How do you use in-vehicle communication equipment cautiously? Number three. How do you recognize a distracted driver? Number four. What is the difference between aggressive driving and road rage? Number five. What should you do when confronted with an aggressive driver? Number six. What are some things you can do to reduce your stress before and while you drive? Now remember, these questions may be on your test. If you cannot answer them, please re-listen to section 2.9 and 2.10. Okay, let's talk about night driving or driving at night. Night driving is more dangerous. You are at a greater risk when you drive at night. Drivers cannot see hazards as quickly as in the daylight, so they have less time to respond. Drivers caught by surprise are less able to avoid an accident. The problems at night driving involve the driver, the roadway, and the vehicle. Driver Factors The Vision Good vision is critical for safe driving. Your control of the brake, accelerator, and steering wheel is based on what you see. If you cannot see clearly, you will have trouble identifying traffic and roadway conditions, spotting potential trouble, or responding to problems in a timely manner. Because seeing well is so critical to safe driving, you should have your eyes checked regularly by an eye specialist. You may never know you have poor vision unless your eyes are tested. If you need to wear glasses or contact lenses for driving, remember to Always wear them while driving, even if driving short distances. If your driver's license says corrective lenses are required, it is illegal to move a vehicle without using corrective lenses. Keep an extra set of corrective lenses in your vehicle. If your normal corrective lenses are broken or lost, you can use the spare lenses to drive safely. Avoid using dark or tinted corrective lenses at night, even if they think help with glare. Tinted lenses cut down the light that you need to see clearly under night driving conditions. Another factor is glare. Glare. Drivers can be blinded for a short time by bright light. It can take several seconds to recover from glare. Even two seconds of glare blindness can be dangerous. A vehicle going 55 miles per hour will travel more than half the distance of a football field during that time. Fatigue and lack of alertness. Fatigue and a lack of alertness. Fatigue is physical or mental tiredness that can be caused by physical or mental strain, repetitive task, ill or lack of sleep. Just like alcohol and drugs, it, it impairs your vision and judgment. Fatigue causes errors related to speed and distance. Increases your risk of be being in an accident. Causes you to not see and react to hazards quickly. 
and affects your ability to make critical decisions. When you are fatigued, you can fall asleep behind the wheel and crash, injuring and killing yourself and others. Fatigue or drowsiness while driving is one of the leading causes of traffic accidents. The NHTSA estimates that 100,000 police report accidents a year are the result of drowsy driving. According to the National Sleep Foundation Sleep in America poll, 60% of Americans have driven while falling asleep and more than one-third admit to having actually fallen asleep at the wheel. Drivers may experience short bursts of sleep lasting only a few seconds or fall asleep for longer periods of time. Either way, the chances of an accident increase dramatically. At-risk groups The risk of having an accident due to drowsiness driving is not uniformly distributed across the population. Accidents tend to occur at times when sleepiness is most pronounced. For example, during the night and in the mid-afternoon, most people are less alert at night, especially after midnight. This is particularly true if you have been driving for a long time. Thus, individuals who drive at night are more likely to fall asleep. Research has identified young males, shift workers, commercial drivers, especially long-haul drivers and people with untreated sleep disorders or with short-term or chronic sleep deprivation as being an increased risk of having a fall asleep accident. At least 15% of all high heavy truck accidents involve fatigue. A congressionally mandated study of 80 long-haul truck drivers in the United States and Canada found drivers aggressive, uh, average less than five hours of sleep per day. It is no surprise that the National Transportation Safety Board reported that drowsy driving is probably the cause of more than half of accidents leading to truck drivers' deaths. For each truck driver fatality, another three to four people are killed. What are the warning signs of fatigue? Warning signs of fatigue. According to the National Sleep Foundation's Sleep in America poll, 60% of Americans have driven while falling, feeling sleepy and 36% admit to actually have fallen asleep at the wheel in the past year. However, many people cannot tell if or when they are about to fall asleep. Here are some signs that tell you to stop and rest. Difficulty focusing, frequent blinking or heavy eyelids, yawning repeatedly or rubbing your eyes, daydreaming, wandering, disconnected thoughts. Trouble remembering the last few miles driven, missing exits or traffic signs. Trouble keeping your head up, drifting from your lane, following too closely or hitting a shoulder rumble strip. Feeling restless and irritable. When you are tired, trying to push on is far more dangerous than most drivers can think. It is a major cause of fatal accidents. If you notice any signs of fatigue, stop driving and go to sleep for the night or take a 15 to 20 minute nap. Are you at risk? Before you drive, consider whether you are sleep deprived, suffering from sleep loss, or driving long distance without proper rest breaks, driving through the night mid-afternoon when you would normally be asleep. Many heavy motor vehicle accidents occur between midnight and 6 a.m. Consider whether you are taking sedating medications like antidepressants, cold tablets, or other. Consider whether you are working more than 60 hours a week. This increases your risk by 40%. Consider whether you are working more than one job and your main job involves shift work. Consider whether you are driving alone or on a long, rural, dark, or boring road, or flying or changing time zones. Preventing drowsiness before a trip. Get adequate sleep. Adults need seven to eight hours to maintain alertness. Prepare route carefully to identify total distance, stopping points, and other logistic considerations. Schedule trips for the hours you are normally awake, not in the middle of the night. Drive with a passenger. Avoid medications that cause drowsiness. Consult your physician if you suffer from daytime sleepiness. Have difficulty sleeping at night or take frequent naps. Incorporate exercise into your daily life to give you more energy. 
Let's talk about maintaining alertness while driving. Protect yourself from glare and eye strain with sunglasses. Keep cool by opening the window or using the air conditioner. Avoid heavy foods. Be aware of downtime during the day. Have another person ride with you and take turns driving. Take periodic breaks about every hundred miles or two hours during a long trip. Stop driving and rest or take a nap. Caffeine consumption can increase awareness for a few hours, but do not drink too much. It will eventually wear off. Do not rely on caffeine to prevent fatigue. Avoid drugs. While they may keep you awake for a while, they will not make you alert. If you are drowsy, the only safe cure is to get off the road and sleep. If you do not, you risk, you risk your life and the life of others. Let's talk about roadway factors. Some roadway factors are poor lighting. In the daytime, there is usually enough light to see well. This is not true at night. Some areas may have brighter street lights, but many areas will have poor lighting. On most roads, you will probably have to depend entirely on your headlights. Less lights mean you will not be able to see hazards as well in the daytime. Road users who do not have lights are hard to see. There are many accidents at night involving pedestrians, bicyclists, and animals. Even when there are lights, the road scene can be confusing. Traffic signals and hazards can be hard to see against a background of signs, shop windows, and other lights. Drive slowly when lighting is poor or confusing. Drive slowly enough to be sure you can stop in a distance that you can see. Let's talk about drunk drivers. Drunk drivers and drivers under the influence of drugs are a hazard to themselves and to you. Be especially alert around the closing time of bars and taverns. Watch for drivers who have trouble staying in their lane or maintaining speed, who stop without reason or show other signs of being under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Okay, let's talk about your vehicle factors. What are your vehicle factors or your headlights? At night, your headlights will usually be the main source of light for you to see by and for others to see you. You cannot see nearly as much with your headlights as you see in the daytime. With low beams, you can see ahead about 250 feet with high beams around 350 to 500 feet. You must adjust your speed to keep your stopping distance with the, in the sight of your lights. This means going slowly enough to be able to stop within the range of your headlights. Otherwise, by the time you see a hazard, you will not have enough time to stop. Night driving can be more dangerous if you have problems with your headlights. Dirty headlights may give only half the light they should. This cuts down your ability to see and makes it harder for others to see you. Make sure your headlights are clean and working. Headlights can be out of adjustment. If they do not point in the right direction, they will not give you a good view and they can blind other drivers. Have a qualified person. Make sure they are adjusted properly. You must turn on your headlights a half hour after sunset to a half hour before sunrise. If snow, rain, fog, or other hazardous weather conditions require to use your windshield wipers, you must turn on your lights. You must turn on your lights when visibility is not sufficient to clearly see a person or vehicle for a distance of a thousand feet. No vehicle may be driven with only parking lights on. However, they may be used as signals or when the headlamps are not or when the headlamps are also lighted. Let's talk about your other lights. In order for you to be seen easily, the following must be clean and working properly. Your reflectors, your marker lights, your clearance lights, your tail lights, your identification lights. Turn signals and brake lights. At night, your turn signals and brake lights are even more important than telling other drivers what you intend to do. Make sure you have a clean work, working turn signal and brake lights. Windshield and mirrors. Let's talk about your windshield and mirrors. It is more important at night than in the daytime to have a clean windshield and clean mirrors. Bright lights at night can cause dirt on your windshield or mirrors to create a glare, blocking your view. Most people have experienced driving toward the sun just as it has risen or is about to set and found that they can barely see through a windshield that seems to look okay in the middle of the day. Clean your windshield on the inside and outside to see driving safely at night. Let's talk about night driving procedures. For the pre-trip procedure for night driving, make sure you are rested and alert. 
If you are drowsy, sleep before you drive. Even a nap can save your life or the lives of others. If you wear eyeglasses, make sure they are clean and unscratched. Do not wear sunglasses at night. Do a complete vehicle inspection of your vehicle. Pay attention to and check all lights and reflectors and cleaning those that you can reach. Now avoid blinding others. Glare from your headlights can cause problems for drivers coming towards you. They can also bother drivers going in the same direction you are when your lights shine in the rear view mirror. So dim your lights before they cause glare for other drivers. Dim your lights within 500 feet of an oncoming vehicle and when following other vehicles within 500 feet. Avoid glare for, from oncoming vehicles. Do not look directly at lights of oncoming vehicles. Look slightly to the right at a right lane or the edge marker if it's available. If other drivers do not put their low beams on, do not try to get back at them by putting on your own high beams. This just increases the glare for oncoming drivers and increases the chances of an accident. They could hit you. Use high beams when you can. Some drivers make the mistake of always using their low beams. This seriously cuts down on the ability to see ahead. So use high beams when it is safe and legal to do so. Use them when you are not within 500 feet of an approaching vehicle. Also, do not let the inside of your cab get too bright. This makes it harder to see outside. Keeping the interior light off and adjust your instrument lights as low as you can to, see, to be able to read the gauges. If you get sleepy, stop at the nearest safe place. People often do not realize how close they are to falling asleep, even when their eyelids are falling shut. If you can safely do so, look at yourself in the mirror. If you look sleepy, or just feel sleepy, stop driving. You are in a very dangerous condition. The only safe cure is to sleep. Driving in fog. Fog can occur at any time. Fog on highways can be extremely dangerous. Fog is often unexpected and visibly can deteriorate rapidly. Visibility can deteriorate rapidly. You should watch for foggy conditions and be ready to reduce your speed. Do not assume the fog will thin out after you enter it. The best advice for driving in fog is not to do so. It is preferable that you pull off the road into a rest area or truck stop until visibility is better. If you must drive, be sure to consider the following. Obey all fog-related warning signs. Slow down before you enter fog. Use low-beam headlights and fog lights for best visibility even in the daytime. And be alert for other drivers who may have forgotten to turn on their lights. Turn on your four-way emergency flashers. This will give vehicles approaching you from behind a quicker opportunity to notice your vehicle. Watch for vehicles on the side of the roadway. Seeing taillights or headlights in front of you may not be a true indication of where the road is ahead of you. The vehicle may not even be on the road at all. Use roadside highway reflectors as guides to determine how the road may curve ahead of you. Listen for traffic you, that you cannot see. Avoid passing other vehicles. Do not stop along the side of the road unless you absolutely need to. Let's talk about driving in the winter. Your vehicle checks. Make sure your vehicle is ready before driving in winter weather. You should, you should make a regular vehicle inspection, paying extra attention to the following items. Coolant level. Make sure your coolant system is full and there's enough antifreeze in the system to protect against freezing. This can be checked with a special coolant tester. Defrosting and heating equipment. Make sure your defroster works. They are needed to, for safe driving. Make sure the heater is working and that you know how to operate it. If you use other heaters and expect to need them, check their operation, like the battery box, mirror heaters, fuel tank heaters, etc. Check your wipers and washers. Make sure the windshield wiper blades are in good condition. Make sure the wiper blades press against the window hard enough to wipe the windshield clean. Otherwise, they may not sweep off snow properly. Make sure the windshield washer works and there is washing fluid in the washer reservoir. Use windshield washer antifreeze to prevent freezing of the washer liquid. If you cannot see well enough while driving, for example, in your, if your wipers fail, stop safely and fix the problem. Check your tires in winter weather. Make sure you have enough tread on your tires. 
The drive tires must provide traction to push the rig over wet pavement and through the snow. The steering tires must have traction to steer the vehicle. Enough tread is especially important in winter conditions. You must have at least 4 30 seconds inch tread depth in every major groove on front tires and at least 2 30 seconds inch on the other tires. More would be preferable. Use a gauge to determine if you have enough tread for safe driving. Tire chains. You may find yourself in conditions where you cannot drive without tire chains, even to get to a safe place. Carry the right number of chains and extra crosslinks. Make sure they will, they will fit your drive tires. Check the chains for broken hooks, worn or broken crosslinks, and bent or broken side chains. Learn how to put the chains on before you need to do it in snow and ice. Lights and reflectors. Make sure the lights and reflectors are clean. Lights and reflectors are especially important during bad weather. Check from time to time during bad weather to make sure they are clean and working properly. Your windows and mirrors. Remove any ice, snow, etc. from the windshield, windows, and mirrors before starting. Use a windshield scraper, snow brush, and windshield defroster as necessary. Hand holds, steps, and deck plates. Remove all ice and snow from hand holds, steps, and deck plates. This will reduce the danger of slipping. Radiator shutters and winter front. Remove ice from the radiator shutters. Make sure the winter front is not closed too tightly. If the shutters freeze shut or the winter front is closed too much, the engine may overheat and stop. Exhaust system. Exhaust system leaks are especially dangerous when cab ventilation may be poor. Loose connections could permit poisonous carbon monoxide to leak into your vehicle. Carbon monoxide gas will cause you to be sleepy. In large enough amounts, it can kill you. Check the exhaust system for loose parts and for sound or signs of leaks. Let's talk about driving on slippery surfaces. Slippery surfaces drive slowly and smoothly on slippery roads. If it is very slippery, you should not drive at all. Stop at the first safe place. Start gently and slowly. When first starting, get the feel for the road. Do not hurry. Check for ice. Check for ice on the road, especially bridges and overpasses. A lack of spray from other vehicles indicates ice has formed on the road. Also, check your mirrors and wiper blades for ice. If they have ice, the road most likely will be icy as well. Adjust turning and braking to the conditions. Make turns as gently as possible. Do not brake any harder than necessary, and do not use the engine brake at sp or speed retire. They can cause the driving wheels to skid on slippery surfaces. Adjust speed to the conditions. Do not, do not pass slower vehicles unless it's absolutely necessary. Go slowly and watch far enough ahead to keep a steady speed. Avoid having to slow down and speed up. Take curves at slower speeds and do not brake while in curves. Be aware that as the temperature rises to the point where ice begins to melt, the road becomes even more slippery. Slow down even more. Adjust space to the conditions. Do not drive alongside other vehicles. Keep a longer following distance. When you see a traffic jam ahead, slow down or stop to wait for it to clear. Try hard to anticipate stops early and slow down gradually. Watch for snow plows as well as salt and sand trucks and give them plenty of room. Wet brakes. When driving in heavy rain or deep standing water, your brakes will get wet. Water in the brakes can cause the brakes to be weak, to apply unevenly or to grab. This can cause lack of braking power, wheel lockups, pulling to one side or the other, and jackknife if you pull a trailer. Avoid driving through deep puddles or fl flowing water if possible. If not, you should slow down and place the transmission in a low gear. Gently put on the brakes. This presses linings against brake drums or discs to keep mud, silt, sand, and water from getting in. Increase engine RPM and cross the water while keeping light pressure on the brakes. When out of the water, Maintain light pressure on the brakes for a short distance to heat them up and dry them out. 
Make a test stop when it's safe to do so. Check behind to make sure no one is following you and then apply the brakes to be sure they work well. If not, dry them out further by, dis by the description above. Caution. Do not apply too much brake pressure and accelerator at the same time or you could overheat the brake drums and the linings. Let's talk about driving in very hot weather. Vehicle checks. Do a normal vehicle inspection, but pay special attention to the following items, your tires and your engine oil. When checking your tires, check the tire mounting and air pressure. Inspect the tires every two hours or every hundred miles when driving in very hot weather. Air pressure increases with temperature. Do not let air out. The pressure will be too low when the tires cool off. If a tire is too hot to touch, remain stopped until the tire cools off. Otherwise, the tire may blow out or catch fire. Now your engine oil. The engine oil helps keep the engine cool, as well as lubricating it. Make sure there is enough engine oil. If you have an oil temperature gauge, make sure the temperature is within the proper range while you are driving. Also the engine coolant. Before starting out make sure the engine cooling system has enough water and antifreeze according to the engine manufacturer directions. When driving check the water temperature or coolant temperature gauge from time to time. Make sure it remains at the normal range. If the gauge does goes above the highest safe temperature there may be something wrong that could lead to engine failure or possibly fire. Stop driving as soon as it's safely possible and try to find out what's wrong. Some vehicles have sight glasses, see-through coolant overflow containers, or coolant recovery containers. These permit you to check the coolant level while the engine is hot. If the container is not part of the pressurized system, the cap can be safely removed and coolant added even when the engine is at operating temperature. Never remove a radiator cap or any part of the pressurized system until the system has cooled. Steam and boiling water can spray under pressure and cause severe burns. If you can touch the radiator cap with your bare hand, it is probably cool enough to open. If coolant has to be added to a system without a recovery tank or overflow tank, follow these simple steps. Shut your engine off. Wait until the engine is cooled. Protect your hands by wearing gloves. Turn radiator cap slowly to the first stop, which releases the pressure seal. Step back while pressure is released from the cooling system. When all pressure has been released, press down on the cap and turn it further to remove it. Visually check level of coolant and add more coolant if necessary. Replace the cap and turn all the way to the closed position. Engine belts. Check your engine belts in hot weather. Learn how to check a V-belt tightness on your vehicle by pressing on the belts. Loose belts will not turn the water pump or the fan properly. This will result in overheating. Also, check belts for cracking or other signs of wear. Hoses. Make sure coolant hoses are in good condition. A broken hose while driving can lead to engine failure and even fire causing an accident. Driving in the heat. Watch for bleeding tar. Tar on the road. Tar on the road pavement frequently rises to the surface in very hot weather. Spots where tar bleeds to the surface are very slippery. Go slowly enough to prevent overheating. High speeds create heat for your tires and the engine. In desert conditions, the heat may build up to the point where it's dangerous. The heat will increase chances of tire failure and even fire and engine failure, causing an accident and possibly death. Now it's time to test your knowledge. I'll ask you a few questions. You should know the answer in your mind. If you don't know the answer, you may need to re-listen to these sections. Question number one. You should use low beams whenever you can. Is this true or false? Number two. What should you do before you drive if you are drowsy? Number three. What effect can wet brakes cause? And how can you avoid these problems? Number four. You should let air out of your hot tires so the pressure goes back to normal. Is this true or false? Number five. You can safely remove the radiator cap as long as the engine is not overheated. Is this true or false? Now remember, these questions may be on your DMV test. If you cannot answer them all, you need to re-listen to subsections 2.11 through 2.14. We have now completed section 2.14. In the next video, we'll start at 2.15 and beyond. Thank you so much for listening.